How do you make a schedule? Simplified one, no buys, nothing like that. Click on the schedule at the top. Got a, uh, the button here, new schedule. Uh, I found the only way to really get it done is pairing date, time, and field. Brings you to the screen, schedule information. Schedule name, we can name it uh, AU Games Fall 2018. Then you have to select what program you're gonna be pulling the team from. The activity type is automatically populated. Division, we're doing AU. And you have to hit this. This always takes me a second to remember. Um, if you don't hit this, it won't let you go to the next page. Division, schedule type, games. Um, I like to be able to control game notification, reminders, and such. Uh, so I turn that off. Total number of games, practices each team plays. This is basically how many weekends are they playing. We have seven weekends of games. We actually have eight, but one was a self scrimmage at home, which is done. We don't do points. It can start, be, you know, obviously, whenever, before. And then what time? So since we have Saturday games, unselect all the other days. Turn this to the time that we start, which is 10 a.m. The, look at this. Um, it used 20 minute games. The 10 minute uh, half is 50 minutes. So, you know, 50 minutes for a game. I think it only does the. We'll just do the hour. Let's just do an hour. All right, game duration. Uh, the last game could start at. We'll just do 11 15 since an hour gives 15 minutes to change. All right, game duration, one hour, no minutes. Time between games, you want at least 15 minutes. If you leave this zero, it doesn't let you go to the next page. Time between rounds, um, you don't have to worry about that. Max number of game teams can play per day. Well, you can always change that, but typically we can only really move it to, um, we only play one game per day, unless you're doing a term, tournament or something. All right, tab number two. Schedule information, this is how you add your teams. One, two, three, four teams is an even number, so we don't need to have buys. Typically, if there's a, if you're gonna do buys, I say, you know, right, buy as a team, add external teams, and you can add that team. Or if we're playing, say, an inter-regional play, like Saugerties, sometimes we play. Um, you can add them here and add the team, and then it's a pretend team here, and you don't have to have all the information assigned. They don't exist anywhere else except on the schedule, but we don't have that. Okay, here's the fields we have. Um, Olive, Shindig, and Woodstock. It's important to allocate your teams, as in um, make, a, make give them a home field. So I'm going to go to Olive. I'm going to go to Olive 8U1 field. All right, get rid of last year's team. Select team. Oh, it's not even in there. We're going to go to the 8U. And since we're in Olive, Olive United, add team. Save. All right, so now that's Olive's home field. Then we go to Shandake and do the same. Shandaken, AU, edit home teams. Shandaken burn no longer. Yeah, see, once you do this once, it auto populates. Shandaken burn. Now, even though it said Shandaken burn AU here, it won't. It's the one from last season, so you have to eliminate it and put in the new one. Otherwise, the players on that team won't get the emails or be able to see their schedule. All right, Woodstock. Woodstock had a lot because they had a jamboree last year. Woodstock AU, first field. Woodstock, oops. Impact and Thunder, 
save. Okay, home field done. Save and continue. Oh, you know what I want to show you? Back on tab number three, manage locations and fields, blackout dates are important. So as you can see, I've already done it, but under Olive, I've clicked edit blackout dates. We do not have games on Columbus Day weekend, which is that, nor do we have games on Memorial Day weekend. So I've, I've already gone in. You can either add a date or edit it. And um, I have added it to all the fields. Every one I've changed to the blackout date so that nobody can play on that weekend. That's how you have a holiday weekend. Okay, now you have to actually add the fields. I don't really understand this, why this happens, because, well, anyway. Okay, so Olive, we're using our 8U1 field. And then you simply pull down the Shandaken. Uh, 8U Shandaken 1 and Woodstock. Woodstock, 8U Field 1. Olive, Shindig, and Woodstock, good. So this is just the fields that, you know, allocated fields, I don't know. I don't get that because all the fields that showed up, that you saw in the left column, all come in as options when you do it. All right, now this is just blackout dates again. It's very repetitive. This is the blackout dates which I showed you before. There's the holiday for Columbus Day, you know, it's the same thing, it does the same thing. If you need to have a team to have a blackout date, um, you can do it there. Okay, so this is just a review of everything. Shows you your fields, shows you what you selected in the first screen. It shows you that you've selected Saturday. You can't change anything in the screen, it's just for review and it shows you all the blackout dates. Yeah. All right, so here's the schedule. That's that. Pretty cool, huh? So everything's done. It does the math. It makes it so everybody has played the same amount, or at least as close to the same amount, home games as away, and played each other equally. Um, if you've done it well, you'd be able to hit this. Now, if there were conflicts, it would bounce you back there and give you exclamation points. But we passed, so now you're on the schedule preview. This is right before you post it. It's exactly what you just saw, but you can't edit from here. The nice thing is to go to the audit report. Audit report tells you exactly how many games and where and who against each team plays with. All right, so it gives you this spreadsheet here. So you can see home and visitor counts, and you can line them up, right? So Shandaken has four. Shandaken and Olive looks like they have an extra home game. Woodstock has an extra away game. Sorry, Woodstock. But keep in mind, these probably are away games where they're playing each other. So in the end, it's probably the same. You can see where each team is playing, so at the Shandaken fields. Shandaken plays four times, Olive plays once, Woodstock plays three times. Not totally even, but honestly, I couldn't do any better doing it all myself. Um, isn't that interesting? Woodstock Como Property, Woodstock Thunder only plays three times. Hmm. Well, let's go down here and see. Woodstock Thunder. Where are we? Why is Woodstock Thunder only playing three games at home? And three times at Shandaken. All right, well, I'll go in and try to fix that. But, um, sorry, Woodstock Thunder. 
I'm not sure why I did that. I guess to equal this out. Oh, you know, because Shandaken. I don't know why. Well, I'll fix that later. But anyway, so this is the audit report. It pulls up another page. But if you go back here, there it is. And I showed you in the first one how I don't like to hit email. So I'm going to email it here. You can email to everybody who this affects. I like to send the PDF. I'll be honest, I've never seen this arrive, so I'm not sure how it goes. But um, write your note. Okay. And it's supposedly going to send it, but I'll be honest, I haven't seen it yet. I just found that one, but I'm going to post it. Save and finish. Done. I don't know why it's not posted. They should all say unpost here because they are actually posted. And that's that. That's how you make a schedule.